if you want affordable, save yourself a lot of money and just go out and pick up last year's Z Fold 4. Alternatively, get the S23 Ultra. Want to know why? Well then stick around for this super quick explainer and you'll find out why we think the S23 Ultra is a better buy than most foldables. So folding phones are slowly starting to gain a sizable smartphone market share, but for most people, a regular phone just offers more bang for your buck. For that reason, we think you should skip the Z Fold 5 and even the Z Flip 5 and go straight for a discounted S23 Ultra. And here's the crux of our argument. Folding phones make too many compromises in areas that matter most to many of you. Whoa, whoa, before you go and hit that X off this video and close this, at least let me explain. So the Galaxy Z Fold 5 is gonna be a great buy for many of you. There's no denying that being able to open the device and get what amounts to a tablet screen at any time you want is epic. For multitaskers or even a work phone with the extra S Pen, that's a great package. Yes, it's really hard to deny that. Plus, unfolding to access that big screen is really quite satisfying to try out for yourself. However, you're sacrificing in so many areas just to have that unfolding mini tablet screen at a moment's notice. Don't get us wrong, the Z Fold 5 is at the peak of what we have in the foldable space and an among the best, but it's the tiniest upgrade in recent Samsung memory. The Galaxy S23 Ultra is at the peak of the smartphone space period. No compromises, no questions to answer. It's one of the best phones you can buy. Still, that even includes the iPhone 14 series and likely the iPhone 15 when that launches. I can actually almost hear you saying from beyond your screen, what about the screen differences? Yeah, that's fair. The Fold has a bigger screen and a smaller screen, but the usable space is where the S23 Ultra has a little something to say on that argument. Take for instance, watching a video or a movie. If you want to full screen this on a Fold type phone, you're gonna have le heavy letterboxing because the almost one-to-one -one squared off aspect ratio of that inside screen, or on the outer screen, the slim shape, because this is not a regular size of its own, means it might end up looking quite weird. In landscape mode, the Galaxy S23 Ultra just handles full screen videos a lot better than the Z Fold and even the Z Flip. Obviously, you can open lots of apps and have players simultaneously running if you do have that on the inner screen of the Z Fold 5 to mitigate that, but I can't believe I'm gonna say this. Even though the S23 Ultra display is frankly massive, it's just easier to manage than that unfolded Z Fold 5. There, I said it. Also, I will say the lack of a screen crease is just less distracting. It's something that a lot of people, we hear them complaining about Samsung foldable devices. Display crease distractions aside, you still have exceptional 120 hertz AMOLED screens from Samsung on all of these devices once again. It's just smooth all over and the internals are practically identical here too. They have the same chip, the same RAM, fast storage. You get the best for a 2023 smartphone no matter which device you choose. Benchmatch though, do put the S23 a hair ahead. The biggest screen differences on these phones though is that the Z45 actually comes with two selfie cameras. One is under the glass of the inner display and I have to say it's pretty trash at four megapixels. The outer selfie and the regular S23 Ultra selfie cameras are pretty comparable for what it's worth. So that is another thing to note with these screens. The S23 Ultra though leaves all foldables in the dust when it comes to other camera capabilities. It has bigger, better sensors and that all important zoom obliterate the competition. It's one of the best smartphone cameras ever produced, at least in terms of consistency in all scenarios. And that includes arguably the best video recording on an Android phone that you can go out and buy. That's obviously an over simplification of the camera capabilities and even the differences between these two. All you really need to know is that because of the physical limitations of a super thin phone that unfolds and folds, it's hard to make the physical space available for bigger camera components. And that's why the S23 Ultra and regular smartphones will always oust foldables, at least until something truly generational happens with these devices. And all I would say is that you need to know is that the Fold itself is great for photos and videos. It's just not the best that Samsung can offer you today. I'm not gonna argue about which has the better lifespan of these devices though, as we haven't really had enough time to fully test these two side by side. The new Qualcomm chips inside are great at handling power, plus there's ample battery tucked away inside the Duo. Although with two screens of power, expect the Z Fold 5 to last a little bit less if you're using it in all day, every single day, especially in work scenarios. And you can see the capacities on screen with these devices with the appropriate charging times and charge speeds, all pretty par for the course today, but it will be faster on the S23 Ultra with that 45 watt wire charging available. To summarize this entire video, the Z Fold 5 really is overpriced. And I think most people should save a substantial wedge of cash and grab last year's Fold 4 refurbished, new or used, if you simply must have a foldable phone today. And a lot of that is to do with the minor upgrades that have been brought here in 2023. I genuinely think it's that simple an argument. 
Compounding that, for less money, now with discounts, the S23 Ultra is a better device in almost all of the key areas. Shape, size, and what you need to do on a daily basis will need to be considered before you fork over nearly $2,000 for a Z Fold 5, and that's at full price. Even with discounts and rebates, it's a tough sell for most people, and a lot of that is actually to do with the outer display and its limitation. Why is that important? Well, this is where you'll likely spend most of your time doing the basics. Think about it. You're not gonna open the screen fully to do things like change a track on Spotify at the gym, or maybe even while walking the dog or replying to a text on the go. In specific instances, it is hard to argue that the Z Fold 5 is the best for doing lots at once. Otherwise, I have to say, it's not really competition. The S23 Ultra even includes an integrated S Pen if you want note taking or annotation options out of the box without having to pay extra. So that's why we think regular smartphones such as the Galaxy S23 Ultra are definitely going to be a better buy than devices like the Z Fold 5 and even the Z Flip to a lot of people. If you have any different opinions and you do own a foldable of your own, let me know how you're getting on down in the comment sections below. Really interesting to hear people, how they get on with their devices, especially this new form factor. But that's hopefully enough reasons to help you decide for yourself. Until next time though, I'll catch you in the next upload.